Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org, and I'm going to play a 15-2 game against Lassie46. Alright. Hmm. Let's go with the knight f3. <laughs> Let's see what black comes up with. Uh-huh. c5. Alright. Well, let's shoot for d5, grab some space. This could get sharp. e6, c4. Oh. b5. Alright. Hmm. How to treat this? That's a very early b5. My first thought is a4. Uh, another is to maybe play c4, and after takes, knight c3. Mm, I think I like the idea of c4, because on a4 there's bishop b7, and I could take the b-pawn, but then they take the d-pawn. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with, let's go with this. If they take, they're kind of, uh, in a way, wasting some time. Uh, I may be, I may be able to conveniently pick this pawn back up. B takes, knight takes, or excuse me, B takes, knight c3, preparing e4, and then development with capture. So let's see how black approaches this. They uh, they may play bishop b7, waiting for knight c3, and then give my knight a kick. I think on bishop b7, I think this may be transposing to one of the first uh, standard games I've posted on the channel here. I think a4 is a move. Yeah, I think I think we're arriving at a similar position by transposition. So I'm thinking a4 here to resolve, to, to kind of force this pawn to make a decision finally. I'll be fine with takes like this. Strong control here. So a4 takes and then knight c3. I want a little more information about this pawn. I don't want to allow knight c3 and then be kicked. If here b4, then I could go here and do this kind of stuff. So I'm thinking a4. I'm going to go with a4. Let's see. Will they try and maintain their pawn on b? Capture or push? They have to make one of those decisions. I am, um, okay. I was just going to say I'm really weakening my b5 square, so they could have considered a plan um, like taking keeping the square open, in other words, and doing something like a5 and then sinking the knight into b4. So how to assess this position so far? On the queen side, it's pretty much closed. <laughs> Many instances of fixed pawns, and I think the, the way forward now is b3, bishop b2. The only thing I'm questioning now is move order. I like that this bishop is uh, kind of biting on a rock. And I'd like to keep him uh, just like that. So I need to anticipate e6. I want to be in a position to play e4 to maintain that pawn with a pawn. So that said, I believe I play knight d2, b3, and then bishop to b2. Because I'm expecting them to go with g6 bishop here. I'm just trying to work out how exactly to set up my minor pieces here. Hmm. Something other than knight to d2 to support e4? I don't see it. I don't think declaring my queen's intention so early. Like c2 is a good idea. So, and I don't think bringing my bishop out here is a good idea. I think it's important to play on the long diagonal, so... After all that, I'm going to go with queen knight to d2. e4, well, we'll see what black does. On e6, I'll be playing e4. I'm not sure where he's going to go. One of these two. Uh, kind of makes sense, I believe, to play to d3. 
I'm not fearing any pin against my knight. Oops. <laughs> any pin against my knight. Uh, and I think it would be useful to have some support over my e, e pawn. Okay, well, I think I know where he belongs, so I should probably run in for that as soon as possible. There may be a little trick I need to be on the lookout for when my bishop's on b2, uh, anticipating the dark square bishops opposing one another. He is unprotected on b2 and may be tactically vulnerable once black is castled and has their bishop protected. Uh, there might be something like knight takes, and you know, bishop takes, bishop, knight takes here, and then here with check if I'm castled. Maybe that's going a bit too far. Or, and it's just completely wrong. But, uh, okay, well, I think I could at least start with this. Yeah, let's go with b3. He knows his place. So now I'm seriously weakening c3. Uh, one thing I do not want to have to deal with is a knight landing there. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get on this diagonal. And I could play e4. So this is the situation I'm talking about. Unprotected, but he's also unprotected, so it's more of an issue once he is castled and defended. e4. Let's push in the center. There's no tricks like takes, takes, and the knight jumping like in here to attack my queen because my bishop can return to recapture. Hmm. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to give a little bit more thought to my decision with my light square bishop now. I'll know what my second move is going to be. Just castles. Uh, I may, may want to sidestep something like this where the knight can arrive on e5 with tempo against a piece maybe it's better placed here hmm maybe i have another thing to consider like queen here is is queenside castling is that something i could consider um uh, it is locked on the queen side, but it's kind of a little too airy. <laughs> These guys have uh, drifted a little bit too far away from where my king's residence would be. Um, yeah. Don't really like that idea. I like that I'm playing with this space advantage, playing against this bishop. Hmm. I think in the end I'm going to go for... I'm going to go with the bishop here. Now, this might be an idea to maneuver. Yeah. That might be an idea. So castles. Can I castle? Castles, castles. Knight takes e. Bishop takes bishop. Knight takes knight. Bishop takes rook. Knight takes knight with check. In the end, they will have exchanged... Uh, they will have taken three of my minor pieces and I, and a pawn, so ten points, whereas I would have taken uh, six, uh, two minor pieces and a rook. So I'm fine with that. They'd be giving up the exchange and getting a pawn for it if they go in for this idea after I castle. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. They're still playing with the... A piece that's uh, out of play. I could just rule out any tricky stuff against my bishop next with a, a nice developing move, queen to c2, reinforcing e4. A way forward might be this rook over here, and then playing f4, e5. We'll see what black does about their e-pawn. Will they consider playing e6 and e or e5? These are, This is a really big decision. If it's completely locked, this will be the next uh, pawn break. Okay, that's a little bit surprising. I guess they're kind of lining up something like this with the pawn push. Hmm. Is it worthwhile to stop this maneuver? They are playing with a space disadvantage. 
this would make it a, a bit more uncomfortable for them to pivot about on the e5 square. Hmm. Suppose queen c2, knight g4, bishop takes bishop, king takes, yeah, queen c2, knight g4, bishop takes, bishop, king takes. I could quickly occupy this long diagonal. I like that idea. With check. Um, I don't think I have to invest the move a3. So let's just develop. Let's also secure a loose piece here. b2. And prepare to do similar if they're, if they're going with rook a to e8. I could kind of make that nice uh, offsetting type of move. You occupy the e-file, I get in position to occupy the e-file. It's not yet open, but we're preparing some type of opening. Um, if this pawn plays to e6 and there's ever a capture, I think that that will just favor me. Um, I have two pretty interesting ways to recapture. I could consider taking just like this and playing on the e-file and you know this pawn is without potential if this push occurs and there's a capture and I'm taking like this this pawn does have potential to move but I have strong control over it with pieces knight there and a bishop there are nice in such a situation where the e pawn is exchanged for my d pawn and I'm taking like this having the c4 square open I'd really like to have light square bishops exchanged uh, a pair of knights exchanged, and actually both knights exchanged, and then uh, end up with, actually I said that wrong. I'd like to have in such a situation where I have my knight on c4, the light square bishops exchanged, one pair of knights exchanged, and uh, my dark square bishop exchanged for their other knight. Essentially a, a strong knight on this light square versus a dark square bishop. Although this square could be quite good for the dark square bishop, but anyhow... What is black lining up here, e6 or e5? Should I just play rook a to e1? Uh huh. Yeah, I think so. So let's see how things move forward here. What will black's decision be? It's kind of up to him and what he wants to do. Uh, I'm I'm more of in a, a reacting posture here. Let's see. Let's see what you're going to do with your e-pawn right here and give me a now or never moment to capture or will you give me a will you create immediate tension with e6 I'm not quite sure I know I, I must uh, be the side who stands uh, a bit better due to this space advantage in this bishop being out of play this might be an idea as well for black to not yet commit this pawn and instead reroute the poorly placed bishop under develop it but uh, yeah come out along this diagonal maybe and we'll see. I think this is a useful next move for me. Uh, it stops knight g4, and it may also... Uh, hmm. You know what I didn't consider? This move into f4. Okay, he's going with e5. This was a bad move. Now it's too locked. You know what I would have liked to have done? Knight e1 into d3. I didn't, uh... Hmm. This was, me. This was a poor decision. Because now my bishop's kind of doing similar to their light square bishop. If I allow this pawn to stay. And if I take... Hmm. Okay. Should I capture... If we don't capture, this will be the idea. Hmm. I'm thinking about rook to d1. Knight here to here. Hmm. If rook to d1, knight h5, knight e1... I think I'd want to play g3 first. Rook e1, knight h5, g3. f5 is hitting really fast, although it can't be played right away because of this move. They have to play h6 first. They have to take some care over e6. Hmm. Not like that. 
liking my decision to play my rook here. This is a very important decision, too, in the game. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Huh. I don't want to capture. Pawn takes. Rook takes. There's going to be some serious pressure against this guy. And I'm not in a good position to, let's say, occupy the d5 square. It'd be the one drawback of recapturing with the rook. Is that d5 is weakened, but I'm so far off from really putting that to use, and I feel like it's just going to be target practice for me. In fact, this knight could think about that stuff if he's no longer around. He could pivot on c6. Don't like my last moves, uh, my decision there, move 13. I didn't really uh, evaluate this move here properly. Uh, I should have gone here. Uh, I've wasted a lot of time with that. Uh, I should have better anticipated e5 and been prepared with this maneuver knight e1 to d3. Uh, knight h5, I pretty much have to stop knight f4. One thing that's nice is that when I do play g3, uh, it stops the knight from playing to f4. And when I do move my knight to e1, I'm throwing a punch at their knight. He only has one safe square to go to, current position. All these backward moves are illegal. These moves are just no good. Okay, he has g4, but I'm not sure what that really does. Hmm? Yeah, a knight, a knight there, I could just immediately do that. Okay, so they're, I guess, preparing knight to h7. Yeah, this is about to blow up. Okay, knight. Go there. They're going to play knight h7. Yeah, I think this is going to get really, really wild. Although, you know, on f5, f4 is going to hit, and my bishop will be freed once this... Okay, so they're lining up. What? Are they preparing this? Hmm. Well, let's get my knight here. Yeah. On f5, f4, you see this this move f4 will bring this bishop. His his presence will be felt a bit more as soon as I challenge the e5 pawn with my pawn. There's already a knight and bishop hitting here. <laughs> I may soon play rook here. So yeah, I've made how many moves with that rook? Rook e1, d1, back to e1. Hmm. Okay. There it is. So, to play this right now, well, I'll do this. Preparing to meet f5 with f4. Let's open this up and see what happens. <laughs> if this pawn ever takes, this is another route into e6. So, h6 was to stop this, but there are, there are, there's a couple pivot squares I can make use of to get to the e6 square. So, on f5, f4, I don't have to fear this. Do I have to fear that? I don't think so either, because I could take. And if takes here, he's unprotected on e4. I should just do this move. Let's get there. He's kind of not doing a good job, nor is the light square bishop. His pawn on d5 is a strong one. I think I'm the better side here. Uh, I think I have better pieces, my minor pieces. My knights are in better spots if we do a knight for knight comparison. I think my knights are better. How to improve further if they do like a nothing move like a5? Would I take? Take like this? I don't want to be so quick to give the d6 square up to this knight. You know? Here, takes. I have a passed pawn, but this is, uh, this knight will come right into d6, so I, maybe I don't want to be so quick to take on e5. Can I improve my position further with, let's say, knight here? Or bishop there. Okay, I don't have. I kind of like seeing this move because uh, don't have much choice. <laughs> Sometimes it's good not to have many options to consider. Uh, yeah, let's take here. Indirectly defended by queen and rook. So on takes in this discovered attack, that's fine. I'm taking like this, or maybe first taking here actually. 
and then taking here. It may turn out I have to work around a, a black knight on the e5 square for a little bit. But if that does turn out to be the case, he's under control at least by my bishop on e2. I don't have to worry about like knight g4 or something. Also, they have a more vulnerable king. Yeah, they have their two, their g and h pawns are on their, uh, their third rank. So a little bit airy. This pawn is unprotected. They're looking to reroute now. Hmm. Maybe I can consider here. Huh. I think that'll help them out if I do that. Should I reposition this guy? Hmm. Hmm. Not sure what to do here. Pawn takes. I really don't want to do that. Hmm. Feels like there should be some tactic here, man. Bishop f3. Dropping a pawn. Bishop g4, knight f6. Yeah, they can't play knight f6 so quickly. Uh, knight f6, bishop takes... Well, if this knight is free to capture, I think my queen can maybe sweep in. Okay, we're going to have a bunch of exchanges. let us I'm going to try for this. Let me consider just a little bit more. Under three. Bishop g4. Knight f6. Knight takes. Bishop takes. They need to keep peace on this square. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Pawn takes. Knight takes, knight takes, I'm on this. Yeah, this should be good then. He's a loose piece, but that's all right. All right, so the knight moves, they go there. Yeah, if, if they don't move the knight, I'm playing bishop to e6, and that's going to be extremely uncomfortable. Because then I'm ready to really crash through, take a bunch of times. I was saying about being a hesitant taking on this square because I don't want to be so quick to give this square up but things have opened up a bit uh, and there are always these uh, timely more concrete lines you always have to be considering is now the moment to do it we're going to see they're playing with a knight on the first rank a knight on the second rank I like my knights when we compare those guys these will soon probably just be gone this is a desirable trade as well if we consider good versus bad bishops situations. You know, I mean, one idea could be to, to check and then maybe even push f5 and then play where I have a super strong knight on e4. Maybe uh, one that I could just reinforce. We'll see. They're under six. Okay. What other move is there? I'm only looking at this move here. I didn't consider any other candidate moves for black. Are they going to consider capturing here? I still like this. No, I don't think that that could be good. I mean, my knight jumping in here, ooh, that would be bad. Yeah, that would that would be a very difficult piece to, to cope with. I mean, bad enough that you're losing a pawn, but even if you weren't losing a pawn, a knight on that square... Monster town. Uh, I think, I, I don't know that you could allow this bishop to play here. Going here, he's kind of going into no man's land. He's, he's kind of underdeveloping. He's not going on the back rank, but it's as if he's... B6 is just as good as the back rank, it would it would seem. It seems to me. Okay, so... Not sure what other moves to consider. Um, I'm really thinking they're going to play knight to f6. And my choices will be quite limited. I think I'll take here first. Okay, king there. Hmm. Okay. Well, they're on the same diagonal, so this is maybe something. Hmm. It's maybe a good move there, huh? Maybe I just play here first, or do I do this? I was saying, I was talking about this earlier. I do push here, don't I? F5 is strong. Hmm. 
Hmm. Um. Give up on this capture? Or just push? Hmm. I'm going to push. Let's see. I could always take with check. If they push, that's some scary stuff going on there. I have a lot of uh, clearance ideas. Push, takes, takes with check, knight takes here, discover check. A lot of pieces in between the queen and the king, but I have... I, I'm, I'm still I'm looking at this diagonal, for sure. I think they need to take... Um, I don't think they could push, and I don't think allowing me to take and invite their king forward is good. So many pieces on board. How many? I mean, we only have a pawn exchange at this point. Whoa, they really did play that move. That cannot be right. Cannot be right. Don't believe it. That's got to be correct. There's, I think they're running right into these discoveries now. I get to move him. And then I get to pick my favorite square to go to with my knight as a discovery. Now, this might be even close to mate somehow. Functioning on the g6 square. Checks. Light square pressure. Yeah. Oh, and another thing, you know, I could take this and then here. So this... Hmm. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I can move this knight with a, a discovery eventually, but it's really this knight. Um, where would be a good discovery move? Okay, so... Take their bishop first? And take their knight. And take their knight, that's check. See how they recapture. Like that. Okay, so... Hmm. Okay, I think I see the winning continuation. Yeah, my knight's going to get to this square. Let's take here first. Then I get to play this with check and play here with check or... Hmm, maybe I'm off with that. Because they could take on e1 first. Oh, but wait. I don't have to take this pawn. I could play knight here into here, as tempting as this move is. Here, king here. Oh, I'm not landing a fork now, though. There is no fork when I get there. Hmm. I'm down a pawn. I might want to play on the light squares, though. Knight takes pawn. Mm hmm. I'm gonna go with this. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna take the pawn. I'm just gonna sink into this square. Yeah. I don't know. Um. I kind of felt that my knight would be stranded there, so let's, let's try this. Play on the light squares a little bit. The queen here, here, could soften up their king's side. Okay, they're just taking it, giving it right back. Okay. Hmm. Okay, they're going to hunt that pawn down. Well, let's see. It's two pawns and the minor piece for the rook. I'm already, I'm already wondering if I should have... Grab the pawn. <laughs> Regret already? Are you regretting things already? Um, I guess here. I can't hang on to that pawn anymore. Yeah, my bishop's having a tough day. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I gotta go fast. I don't know, here. Yeah, this was not good. I should have grabbed a pawn. 
I should have given that a bit more. Should have considered that more. Okay. Let's get my king up a little bit. I'd like to have the rooks come off. And take care of this f4 square. It's a locked position. There's not enough open files for me. I don't know. I'll go here. There's an open file. This pawn's pinned now. Oh, man. Okay, well, maybe I could enter. No, the bishop's going to play there. Let's see. i got to take that knight out. Bishop f6, I guess. Let's see. They're going to push. And then target. Oh, I didn't even realize they have that move. Oh, that was silly. I didn't even, cons I didn't even consider that that knight could head over to a5. <laughs> okay, unfortunately they don't have this because I could take their bishop. I, need to, I think I need to walk my king over here, rook f2. I don't know. One of these. I need to change roles. I don't want my rook tied down to defending b3. Okay. He's maybe a target. Okay, king. Do some damage. That knight is so dangerous. Okay, I can get this guy now, now. Scary. I mean, knight in here, if they take with the c-pawn, they have two connected passers. I have to make sure they don't get rolling. If I take here, I'm on their bishop. Hmm. They're going to get that b-pawn. Oh, boy. I gotta go for some activity now. I can't save that B-pawn. Well, I could track down their A-pawn and then have a passed A-pawn myself. This has gotten way too wild. <laughs> Where's their knight going, actually? Because so I could take here. He can't go to A. Okay, they're going right into a pin. Let's take that guy with check for starters. And I need to start generating some threats of my own. How about that? Push your A-pawn, buddy. Push that a pawn. I think I could work around a knight for a little bit here. He's kind of boxed out with my rook on f2. Let's see. This might be a new sixth rank. A lot of pieces here, huh? A lot of interesting possibilities, so maybe not so quick to push here. Now, you have a pass pawn. You get pushing that guy. They're also caught up on time, which is nice. Let's see how they play. <laughs> Under pressure. All right, bishop there. Let's keep pushing. Put the pressure on. Their king is cut off. Who's going to stop my a-pawn? Who's going to be the one? They're running low on time. Oh. They just lost on time. Mmm. Hey, I think this position is winning for me, but... Wow. Too scary. Too much, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I gave too much counterplay. This knight getting out of control. My idea of functioning on the light square is not giving, not taking the pawn back. And instead trying to uh, come up with some plan of playing on the light squares. Yeah, that really didn't pan out so well. Uh, yeah, this is, this is certainly something to look back on. I don't like my decision to play here. I wonder if I could have immediately done this knight reposition without waiting for the e-pawn to move. I'm not sure about that. We'll check it out with the computer, and I don't know how useful the computer will be in this lock position. Um, eventually we get to this point. Now I know the computer will be very useful now that it has opened up, and I'm pretty sure I am the better side here. Um, let me just click into the analysis board. Uh, yeah, I probably should have taken that pawn and then jumped into g6. For some reason, I was thinking the queen was going to take, and then I would have a fork against the rooks. They took with the rook, though, sidestepping that fork. So let's just get a feel for how the evaluation went here. So it likes... Oh my goodness. 
It's near... It was plus five after G5. I missed some knockout, man. Yeah. After their G5 move, I missed some move sequence that should have just ended the game. Then they were slightly better. Then I was back to better. And then, yeah, they were they were better at about a pawn and a half around uh, when I played rook to e3. And then in the end, I'm just winning. But wow, okay, so let's kind of fast forward to this middle game. Mm, maybe not. Right around here. Rook there, yeah. You see, this is an uncomfortable position for black. Maybe I should go back just a little bit more, because, you know, the, why am I going back a little bit more? Let me, ex let me say, if the computer at this point is suggesting h5 or rook here, like, these are nothing moves. These are, like, passing moves. So, basically, this idea to push here is, I guess, just never good, because I get to reply with f4. A lot of tension, pawns will be exchanged, and it still remains that the bishop on b7 is just out of play. And uh, my pieces uh, will be quicker to make use of the side of the board which will be open, which is the king side. So if f5 is no good, black has to basically sit and wait, and that's definitely not fun. <laughs> not a good position to be in. So how could black have maybe done something better a little bit earlier? I played c4, bishop there, a4 is it's definitely a move. Queen a5, very computer-like. Just pushed. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the alternative is... Well, this was the one other idea. This was the, this was the plan. Knight c3, e4, and then here. And even if it's defended, I could just take it still, although it's suggesting something like e5. But I still can take here if I wanted to, because I have this idea after to pick him back up. But anyhow, this was my idea with the c4 move and also a4, kind of forcing black to make a decision here. The other one, I just want to look at, look at just a little bit. Suppose they tried to hold ground here. I take, I take the rook force them to retreat and recapture, and then simply develop. And suppose b4? Ah, knight to b5. Okay, so that's nice. With the a-pawns no longer on board, I can play this knight c3 move, and when kicked, move forward. Compare this with playing, let's say, knight c3 right now. On b4, I don't have this move because the knight gets trapped. So that's interesting. So a4, a4, a6, takes, takes. They don't have an a pawn. In fact, let me back up one moment. As soon as this capture occurs, b5 is now a hole in the black position. And it's one that I could look to hop to on the b4 move. Okay. Noted. So, well, what could black have done a little bit different on c4? a4. Well, I kind of like this move. a4. Yeah, it really puts a, a question to this b5 idea. This, these, uh, this Benko-like, they're calling it the pseudo-Benko. Indian game pseudo-Benko on the right there. Yeah, I like this idea. It's a bit of a positional line, I believe. Resolve the tension in the center. Or, not on the center, but make the b-pawn flinch. Make a decision. Okay. b3. Holds it as even. Get all our pieces out. And we're preparing for play on the king side. Computer is pushing for a5. Hmm, don't know about that. I kind of, what's my reasoning with this? I see it as, I you know, a5 will be met with a6, and then he can't go off of the a-file now. 
Hmm. I don't know about that. I'm not sure about a5. Rookie one. Okay. Well, it likes my move rook to e, rook to d1 now. <laughs> uh. Okay. You know, one thing that must be said is even though I lost time with this rook a1 to e1, and then d1, and then back to e1. <laughs> is it's a closed position so time is not that big of a factor it's not like it's a wide open position and i'm just doing a, a little rook shuffle there in a, a knight reposition and this is very locked and so yeah time not not as big a factor knight h5 here has it as even knight h5 bishop takes king takes this was my idea to get on the diagonal right away king back g3 yeah i like my position as white here um i like this queen's post i like that they no longer have their most important minor piece for defense of their king okay so there might be something tied in with the dark squares especially if this pawn moves f6 is then a hole something that i could maybe look to exploit in any case i believe it's it's white who's trying to pick their way to uh it, it's white who's trying to show in what way they are better okay so we did not have the dark square bishops exchange e5 rook d1 and yes let's just consider this is the big this was the big moment in the game it does not like the the idea to capture because of rook takes and he is getting hit a real lot the e pawn it likes black why that move i guess to stop this it also did pop up h6 h6 h3 rook here and then i have to be concerned about this stuff as well uh yeah i mean i was saying it during the game you know when this e6 move is played um taking like this if they take with the rook this is a hole in the black position but it's not one i could make use of you know i can't how do i get a knight here it's just so far off so can't take advantage of the the weakness black has in the position meanwhile black is exerting seems like nice free pressure against my epon don't like that so i'm glad i did not decide to capture but instead play it where my pawn was still this this pawn structure was still uh killing their light square bishop had to waste some time I'm repositioning now this is a strong strong square for the knight pressure here facilitates f4 in some cases you'll also see if this b pawn was still in his home square a knight on d3 is also useful for playing a b4 strike just a really really strong piece if there's a best piece in the white position i'd vote my knight on d3 without question so they're repositioning preparing this stuff and this is it's typical to want to go for this but i have the reply f5 and this is the correct reaction to the f5 break doing something other than f5 they have the, the idea to just lock this down further and then it's black who has some serious space this pun with some great depth here on the king side and play will start to drift over here in a very king's indian like king's indian defense like position for black playing on the king side yeah even though it has an advantage as white this is one that the computer isn't properly evaluating i don't think it can um yeah so Anyhow, the short story here is you have to you have to react uh, to this f5 move with f4. Make sure it does open up on the king side. Takes, and that's where it, I guess it goes downhill. It's suggesting bishop to c8. I think right around this moment I was even suggesting bishop to c8 before playing f5. You know, because he's out of play now. Now that there is no longer this pressure here, I think black can safely make one additional prep move make one additional as odd as this may sound developing move <laughs> to move the bishop back to his home square 
He's un it's he's underdeveloped. Unless there's some tactic against d5, and I don't foresee that, I consider the bishop as undeveloped on b7. So he should probably go to c8 before welcoming these pawn exchanges on the king side. Make one additional prep move. This takes you know, like c8. So it's a little bit late. I mean, it's only a half pawn advantage here, but. Yeah, to make the, the less committal move first is what is maybe one way to kind of view things. So they want f5, f4. It's opening up now, and, well, does like bishop g4. Happy about that. King there. Yeah, so this is just a win here, huh? Plus two and a half. Doesn't like f5 best. I considered bishop e6, but I thought that this was good. Let's see what that uh, winning continuation was. I'll, uh, okay, so it's citing other options as well to take on e5, but pushing is fine as well. Mm. Oh, 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 it, here's the difference. If I'm taking on this square, it forces first. Queen takes bishop. And then I get the desired fork on g6. The thing I was th thinking about before, when I had that fork in mind, uh, yeah, I thought that the I thought that the queen had to take, but by taking on f6 first, the knight gets to recapture, and when I do capture on this square, the rook can be recapturing. Although, okay, this is still winning from this position after a knight takes on f6, so missed uh, multiple tactics in this in this uh, position here where I have that discovered check. But if I take here first, yeah, I kind of discounted taking on c8 first because I didn't like that this knight was here. Oh, I could just safely re uh, keep my bishop. And yeah, he's hit, and when he moves, I'm taking here next. Okay, yeah. Okay, a lot of a lot of tactics missed there. Take on f6 here, and it likes taking on this square first. Huh. This is fine though. Rook takes, and it does want to just take on e5, and that throws away the advantage. Knight to f4. This is what I had in mind on queen takes. Well, I could even still take here. That's not working. Okay, I get the exchange, but it's not as convincing. What was my concern with taking here? My concern was that on this knight here, they could take here first. But I guess this is still quite all right, huh? Oh, because at the end, that knight is tricky, man. There's just forks everywhere. I was too fixated on forking the rooks, but simply landing on g6 and then threatening to get into e7 with another fork of the queen and king. Mm. Wish I had more time to consider uh, that position. Hmm. Okay. Missed, missed tactical tricks. I get my knight into a nice square, but they eliminate it. Queen here. Wants to keep the queens on the board. I don't know what I would have. Oh. That's what I would have had. Yeah, I didn't see this trick. I could take the knight if they take my e-pawn. Bishop's pinned. Take the rook. Hmm. Queen there. Suppose they do something like this, though. Okay, so I start prying open like this takes okay i could go here right away okay yeah i guess i could uh mix it up a little bit and uh while black is concerned about regaining that pawn i could uh focus my attention a little bit more over here on the g and h files and make use of my uh really strong queen position who's really hitting a lot of stuff is she not a lot of pieces are observed here in direct defense hmm Okay, well, I guess this is where it's going to change then. Yeah, so there are no more tricks, and it's back to even. 
And where was it that Black had an advantage? That knight was real, real pest. Didn't like h5. This was my uh, long-winded idea here. Transfer my king over to the to the, to the defense of the b pawn. Takes rook there does not like because of bishop here right now. They did that just a little bit later. Yeah, they could have done that right now and kicked my rook off of this rank and then grab the b-pawn. So bishop here right now and then take here is a much different story. Okay. Knight c6 instead. And yeah, this is this is tough to play. I feel like it's easier for black to play in a way. I do have some open files. I don't know if this was such a good idea by black to play g4 because it is opening up more files always of course the uh, concrete ideas to consider uh, I believe that this was the idea they had in mind which was to defend or kick the rook off of the f3 square chase away the defender of b3 but uh, yeah if, if they aren't really crashing through on b3 they could have but uh, yeah, let me show let me show that here Bishop here, and if I do this, I thought the idea would have been to push, and it still is an idea. Here, here, yikes. And Bishop back, and now he's, how do you defend that guy? Ooh, okay. Knight there, and where does it turn? Okay, I go after the A-pawn, and I think now it's going to be a win for white after black's next move. Yeah, that's a pretty significant advantage. It's black who has a difficult defense now and coping with this past A-pawn. Hmm, it really should have never gotten to this point when I had that open diagonal and they played that G5 move. I didn't see the... Clearly, I didn't see the correct knockout there, the cleanest road to victory. Nor did I uh, even consider anything with that queen to g6 move and seeing this tactic of rook takes on f6. Yeah, that would have been a nice finish. Going straight in for just knight takes here. I should have considered more these uh, these possibilities. The knight may be jumping in here. It's even pointing out queen to g6 at this point. Um, some of my... Okay, I'm glad I just pointed this out. Some of my concern was a knight on this square being stranded. I didn't get to voice it during the game, but I kind of felt a little bit uncomfortable, in a way, having my knight on this square, where he's, he doesn't have support, or I should say he has support, but support by a queen instead of support with a very convenient defender a pawn. So I'm restricted in some sense if my knight is like this. Uh, I don't know if this was the exact... Well, yeah, I think this might have been the, the one variation I quickly thought about. Takes here, and then my idea was to move the knight again, but the computer points out this idea of queen of g6 with then rook takes knight. My knight also has this square to maybe jump to. Okay. Yeah, this was an interesting game. Again, uh, positional positional idea in mind with these uh, C4, A4 moves in reply to this uh, uh, Benko, this pseudo Benko uh, stuff here with the B5. I like this positional stuff with the A4 and C4. And then uh, queen side's locked down and play turns as we saw on the king side. And the big moment here is to know how to correctly reply to that f5 move you need to get in f4 open up the king side where you have the better positioned pieces okay well as usual feel free to leave any feedback uh, to this video in the comment section below and as usual i hope you got something out of it that's all for now take care